Welcome back. This is part three of our Cisco Thousand Eyes for Cloud Developers guided workshop. And what we're going to cover in part three are best practice recommendations and going over some advanced topics like web transaction monitoring. Uh, you saw in part one how that we would get the Thousand Eyes technology and what it was about, how to procure it from AWS Marketplace and how to deploy it using AWS CloudFormation. So go back to part one if you missed that. And part two is how to configure Thousand Eyes agents and how to interpret the Thousand Eyes portal along with configuring alerts. So for best practice recommendations, this is what we want to consider, agent placement. Realize and remember that cloud agents are managed by the Cisco Thousand Eyes team. So use them where practical. You don't have to deploy them. You don't have to maintain them. However, they're fixed locations, so use them in geographies where you have users that are of interest to you to understand their experience and perspective about reachability. Uh, when you do want to have something very specific down to a building or even a home user environment, then you would use the enterprise agents, and those are the ones that you can self-deploy, whether they're deployed using AWS cloud formation like we did in part one, or if you decide to deploy uh, Raspberry Pis or Intel Nooks, or even uh, Docker containers and uh, Linux packages. So whatever suits you for your deployment. When you're deploying in AWS, again, use that cloud formation template because it's provided by Cisco and you don't have to go build up an EC2 instance with Ubuntu, get the operating system installed, configured, and then install the Linux package. Now you can do that if you want. If you already have an EC2 instance running Ubuntu or Red Hat, and you want to add additional functionality to it, like the Thousand Eyes agent, you're more than welcome to do that. But if what you're trying to deploy is a single instance and it's purpose-built for Thousand Eyes agent monitoring, then just use the cloud formation template. It takes care of all of the install, including security group settings that you'd have to do anyway. Endpoint agents, those are again, the browser plugins. They're effective for end user monitoring. So you can say, uh, I want my end user browser to check to see connectivity to GitHub, to Asana, to Jira, to whatever cloud service that is necessary for them to do their job and to gauge the availability, latency, and loss of that service. Remember, when you're building tests to provision them in an additive form, so they are pretty much stacked together, you don't have to recreate the lower tier tests, so don't do that. When you're thinking about your tests, ask yourself, is this an API type test? So then you might use the HTTP server test. When you use that, you get the benefit of the network test and the BGP monitoring test. If, however, you're trying to gauge an e-commerce site, like we'll show soon, then you'll want to do the transaction test, which gives you the benefit of the transaction test, the page load test, the HTTP server test network, and BGP test. Again, remember, you can remove the BGP monitoring test if you want to under the advanced settings if you feel like it's polluting the rest of your user experience and uh, you're not using that information. Pick the types of tests that are most reflective of your app and service. So if you're doing something that's collaborative, voice, video, streaming, then you might use the voice and SIP RTP type tests. We're going to show in the next topic transaction recorders and how it can even do screen captures to give us a representation of our customer experience when going to an e-commerce or consumer to business interaction. When we think about alert notifications, the leading practices here are to use the X of Y settings in alert notifications. We don't want to be alerted or annoyed by single type blips on the internet. We know this is a shared medium in most cases and things are going to happen. Routes need to be reestablished, cam tables and switches need to be reasserted. Uh, and if we react to every single blip 
it's going to be unnerving. So go ahead and set up the X of Y. And if you think about a test that you run every four minutes, then if you were to do a three of five type measurement, then a minimum would be 12 minutes to a maximum of 20 minutes before notification. So go ahead and set your frequency to meet whatever intent you have. And then also consider choosing the number or percentage of agents reporting a similar outage, and that can re reduce the number of false positives. So if you have 20 cloud agents out there that are reporting and monitoring for you, then you may want to say, I need to have more than four of them showing an outage before I really take that notice. And then, like I always say, even with other types of network monitoring and operations technologies, ensure that the alerts that you're generating are being received and monitored by your support personnel. It's that little paradigm, if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's there to hear it, did it really happen? So make sure that people are picking up on the alerts as they're generated. This next section, we're going to talk about an advanced topic of transaction recording. And this is really exciting. This is the ability to download an app that will record a browser session with all the navigation, clicks, and you can even do screen captures to see what the end user interactions are going to look like with your web-based app or service. We're using a Chromium browser that has some programmatic capabilities so we can see where the um, the mouse is pointing and what it's clicking on. And once that browser session is complete, it provides a script, a, a transaction script, that would mimic the user's actions. And it's very helpful for looking at how they navigate through a portal. You can even do authentication and store a dummy username and password. Um, you can click through a navigation system, items in a catalog, or even look at items in a shopping cart. So how we start this, you go to your navigation panel and then click test settings. Then we're going to do an add new test. And what's going to happen is you are going to select the web layer and then the transaction test type. You're going to need to give it a uh, URL. The test name and description are optional and it'll generate one for you if you don't put one. I usually like to. <laughs> so once you define the URL and path to the service or website you're monitoring, set up a schedule and then also the agents that are going to receive this configuration. And then as you scroll down, you'll see a transaction script. And it's already going to have a pre-canned entry put in there for you. And it's a JavaScript, but you may decide that, you know what, this is a little bit more programming than I care to get into at this point. So go ahead and click that Download Thousand Eyes Recorder and install it on your machine because that will help in creating the JavaScript that's used in accessing uh, the process of your web, web page. And so as we spin up that uh, Thousand Eyes Recorder, you see again there's some template JavaScript. We click the red uh, record button and then it will ask us to put in a base URL so what is the website address and then do we want to mimic some kind of user agent so I'm gonna leave it here as desktop large but you could do something that looks like a MacBook or an iPhone or an iPad and then when you're done you click start recording now you get the Chromium browser and we're going to use a pretty freely accessible website on the internet called uh, JPET Store. And this is just a demo site that's offered out there by Octoperf. And uh, we're going to mimic a user doing this e-commerce action. And they're going to order a cat from the pet store. Cats are something that my kids love. So that's what we're doing today. And uh, we see the options for cats are Manx and Persians. Uh, my daughter has a Persian, so we're going to select Persian. And then the options are adult female or adult male. And uh, the price is $93.50. Now, this is kind of funny in my history. My daughter once said, Dad, do you know how much a cat costs? And I said, no, how much? He said, $50, followed by each. So... I guess my daughter is going to grow up to be a cat person because she's excited about how little they cost. Anyway, 
if we click on that item ID EST17, then the next thing we see is essentially a summary screen. And then we can say add to cart by clicking that button. And then we see our shopping cart. We can then click proceed to checkout. And then it provides us a username and login authentication. And I'm gonna pause at this point because that's as far as I wanna go in the workflow that we're monitoring. So we click the red button and return to our recorder and then hit the stop button. And what we're gonna see is that it fills out the rest of the JavaScript, including some comments about load page, uh, where we clicked, like we see on line 17, click on FLDLH2, and then add to cart and proceed to checkout. All this was generated through the programmability extensions in the Chromium browser, and it generated the JavaScript for us. Now we can also add some screen snapshots. If we want to measure, or at least view, what the user would have seen as they went through the process. So we can click the little camera icon and it will insert wherever your cursor is, this await driver take snapshot function. And then we can go ahead and copy or add that to other lines at different places in the workflow um, as we desire. Okay, so we're gonna do three screen snapshots here. And then the next thing you may wanna do is add specific sequence timings by adding these marker dot start and then giving it a tag. So start and stop tags. This gives us the ability to time specific sequences if we know that certain parts of our web page may be a little bit laggy because it has to do a database lookup or something like that. We can say start measuring a new tag here and then end a little bit farther down in the workflow. And that's what we're doing. We're going to start with a page load. We're going to navigate a couple steps and then stop that tag, start with a new navigation tag, end that one, and then move on. And we can play back that uh, script, if you will, and we'll see on the right-hand side these three screen snapshots that the recorder took for us. And when we're happy with what happens here, we can click the Export the Thousand Eyes button and it will put it back into the portal as part of our new test. At this point, we need to wait a little while for it to start provisioning the agents we told it to push it out to, and then to start the tests, and then re uh, returning the results. So after we've waited some amount of time, we'll look in our tests dashboard, and we'll see, in this case, the JPET store entry that I just created. We can acknowledge that it's a web transaction and that it's been running 100% reachability, about four seconds on its um, overall uh, latency and then zero error. So that's some good metrics for us. When we zero in on that test, specifically if we go to a single agent, as I've done here at the top, then we can look at the transaction view and the transaction time. And we'll note the transaction time has prep, page load, and navigate. So the page load and navigate were a couple tags that I added into the JavaScript. And we can see that it's reflected there on the time series graph. And it's also reflected on the lower left-hand side where the metrics are showing 19 milliseconds for prep time for it to set up, uh, half, half a second or 589 milliseconds of load page, and then 3.1 seconds of navigation time. So this is pretty good. We can move on to the completion metric. And so we're seeing a lot more interesting information here. Overall page loads are good. Uh, we can see at the waterfall representation at the bottom, all of the markers and screen snapshots that were taken in this sequence. And each of the items, if we were to scroll down a little bit, we can see all of the image components that are part of that web page, the dogs and reptiles and cat images. And then if we wanna see the screen snapshot where we said to take one, we can click that link and it will pop up essentially an image of what the page rendered as. And this can be very useful to us if we're trying to validate a shopping cart. Maybe we're interested to see that the items landed in the shopping cart correctly 
that they were of a correct quantity. And if we had to do some kind of calculation like taxes or shipping, that everything turned out correctly. We can move down to the other view for HTTP server and then see likewise that we're getting good results from the Apache web server that was hosting this website. And if we want to change availability to response time, we can see that overall we're getting 300 milliseconds response time. And the pie chart at the bottom is showing a very small contribution of lookup to DNS and resolving that um, uh, jpetstore.octo.com into uh, a routable IP address. And then, you know, a reasonable amount of time for connect SSL and wait time. So we wouldn't go and try to tune up our DNS lookups because it's a very low contribution to the overall user experience. But we might want to tune up how quickly our Apache page is served up with that connect metric and see if there's something we can do to optimize our encryption with the SSL uh, components. One of the last advanced topics I want to cover in this series is the Internet Insights. And this is a somewhat new feature in Thousand Eyes. As you know, we have over 400 of these cloud agents that are deployed. And you, as a customer and consumer of Thousand Eyes, have deployed your own enterprise agents all over the world. And the cumulative information that is gathered from this allows us to see insights as to broad application and internet outages. So what we're seeing now is that freely available open information about all of the collected thousand eyes agent information, distilling it down to application and network outages. So here we can see uh, there's an application outage for no B4 and uh, it's been going for eight minutes and seven agents out there have seen this outage. And so if we click on that, we'll see the affected tests, locations, servers, and outages as metrics associated to this application outage. And we can see paths coming from the US, Australia, Taiwan, etc., which does imply, since there are multiple regions experiencing this, that it is a broad outage. And we can change that metric to suit us to another option if we're interested in something like locations where we can then zoom in on the node, which is no B4, and then find out information about how many tests are being affected by that. Additionally, we can navigate down to network outages and find out uh, what networks, what countries and servers are part of this outage and make notes if we care to and get some really good understanding that this outage may be impacting you. Um, you may have seen when we had the Facebook outage in October 4th and the AWS outages uh, in the fall of 2021 uh, that there were several thousand eyes reports that were uh, generated and shared on social media that showed how we were able to capture these outages. So Thousand Eyes is a very effective tool. And in summary, we hope that you see that it is effective, that it's a SaaS solution that you can depend on that will enable you as a cloud developer to support your teams and be able to monitor the availability latency packet loss and the user experience, which is so important to make sure that our services of our apps and the dependencies of our apps on other SaaS services are in good shape. Uh, we would suggest again that you use those cloud agents where it makes sense to mimic your users across the globe and then deploy enterprise agents where you want a more fine-tuned perspective of what that availability measurement looks like. And then just as you saw in advanced topics with web transaction tests, use those for mimicking e-commerce site experience. Hope you've enjoyed this series. I know it was fun to uh, set it all up with uh, AWS and to also uh, make sure that this training was effective for you. Uh, we would enjoy you seeing the resources we also have at developer.cisco.com and our developer relations community. So have a nice day. Thanks again for joining us.